Hello, my name is Johnny. This is only in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an AI an enemy. So an enemy basically which will make decisions based on different circumstances. So to get started, I've created a platformer, a platform project. So I've added the tile background here and I gave the solid behavior to it. To add behaviors. You click here and you select the behavior. I also created a couple sprites, so three different sprites. So let me delete this one. So this is my player. This is an obstacle there that my player will hide behind it. And this is the enemy. So I'm going to create another wall here. So I'm going to hold the control key down. And if I hold the shift key down at the same time, it doesn't really matter if I go move my mouse cursor up or down, you will still be able to see that my object is placed in exactly the same position as the other one here so now i've got this in place i am going to show you the behaviors i have applied for my player so i have applied the solid behavior the scroll to behavior and the platform behavior also i have applied the number of behaviors onto my enemy so i'm going to click here on behavior i've applied the solid behavior the line of sight behavior and the platform behavior. Okay. So the problem I've got here is by default, when you add the behavior here, the platform behavior, by default, the default controls checkbox is checked, which means that when you actually try to play and control your player, at the same time, you're controlling the enemy. As you can see here, my player is a lot faster than the enemy. This is because if I go to the properties panel with the enemy selected, if I go to the properties panel, I will be able to see that the max speed is 60, where if I select my player, the max speed is 330. The reason why I changed the max speed to 60 for the enemy is so you can actually have a better view of what's going on. Obviously, you need to make things a bit more challenging for the player, so you will have to change this later on to a higher speed to make it a bit more challenging. Okay, now I've got this in place. The next thing I need to have in place with the enemy selected, I need to have some instance variables. So I need to have these two instance variables. So a distance and the position. Now the distance, it will have the data type of number and the position, it will have the data type of string. So the string data type will allow me to put text and special characters where the number data type will only allow me to put numbers. To add the instance variable, you click add new instance variable. You name your instance variable appropriately. So for example, I've named it distance and position. So you're do doing first the distance and then you select the number data type. And then you add another instance variable and you'd call it position and you apply the string data type. So let's close this now. Okay, we've got everything in place, but before, in fact, before I go through and apply the uh, events on the event scene, let's create little animations there, because I'm pretty sure people would like to uh, see some animations, apply some animations onto their games, so you're not going to have any issues, basically. So I'm just going to apply some simple animations there, just to keep you going. So... The first thing I need to do here, let's give this guy an eye. Uh, let's let's give him a black eye actually. Let's make it bigger. Oops. Let's control Z. Let's start from the middle. Okay, and let's duplicate this. In fact, let's control Z to do this. So let's give him a mouth as well. Let's make him miserable. And now I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm just going to make, let's select the color palette picker and basically remove a little bit of his mouth there. So we have a little animation of his mouth. And also we're going to put, let's make it wide there. Oops. Control Z to undo. And 
Okay. So I've got here an animation. Okay. But it's going to continue playing. So I need to have three positions here. I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to call this stay. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this, let's rename that. I'm going to call this run. And I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to call this attack. OK, so let's use the control and the wheel on my mouse to basically make it a bit smaller so I can actually see more picture here. So when he's attacking, I'm going to make him I'm going to leave, keep him red. But let's increase. I'm just going to increase the size. Make sure I only want to uh, I don't want to keep the ratio. I want to increase top left and I only want to increase the width. Let's make the width 500 and click OK. And I'm going to do the same for that one here. So increase 500. And the line top left, that's OK. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to make it rude. So when it reaches there, it's going to basically punch. Let's use the color picker there. Give me a solid color there. Looks like a nose there. Okay, he's attacking with his nose. I don't know. Let's give him a little outline. That's his hand. Okay, it comes through his mouth. I don't know. So you have him like that, and then he's punching. Okay, so his hand is there. Okay, so he's punching. So when he's angry, now when he's running, his hand is hidden. Let's change this color there to let's make him. Orange, maybe. Okay, I found the orange there. Let's make his background orange. And when he's staying, it's going to be green. Okay. So when he's staying, he's green. When he's running in orange and when he's attacking is red. Okay. Okay. And let's make this attack animation to loop. The run animation to loop. And the stay animation to loop as well. Okay. So we've got now the different positions of the enemy. So it's time it's show time now. Now it's time for us basically start putting the events the first event i'm going to add it's going to be a, a system event and it's going to be on every tick on every tick i need to put an action and the action is the enemy and i'm going to basically set uh, va the value of the uh, of the distance so let's select set uh, set value okay of the distance it's going to be uh distance and then in brackets in parentheses sorry i'm going to put spr enemy dot x comma spr enemy dot x comma spr player dot x and spr player dot x so close parentheses so i've got basically the exact position of uh the player and the enemy so at any time so every one milli every millisecond 
so this is updated so i know exactly where both the players and the enemy is okay so now i'm going to add a new event it's going to be uh the enemy again and it's going to be where is it compare instance variable and i'm just going to be the position and i'm going to make sure that it's equal to and then i'm going to say run okay and i'm going to right click here i'm going to add a sub event and again it's going to be the enemy and then i will say compare x the compare the x position with the actual spr player dot x position so then i'm going to add another sub event it's going to be a system event and it's going to be the else this will allow me basically to change the the angle of the enemy so the action here it's going to be the enemy and then i'm going to simulate simulate control and i'm going to select left click done and the action for this it's going to be again the player and then i'm going to put mirrored set mirrored to mirrored so basically if it's pointed to the left it's going to mirror to the left else i'm going to hold the shift key down to highlight them both so i'm going to click on the first one hold the shift key down on my keyboard to highlight the second one and now i'm going to control hold the control key on the keyboard sorry and click and drag to replicate this and the only thing i need to do here is change the value from the left to the right and set mirror to no mirror so double click on the first one i'm going to change that to right i click done and set mirrored to no mirrored okay you can do vice versa it doesn't really matter okay so now i'm going to click add an event and then the new event again is going to be the enemy and then i need to check the has side uh, line of sight with another object the other object is my player click done and i'm going to add another condition here so right click select add insert another condition another condition here and it's going to be the enemy set compare the distance variable with basically the distance is as long as the distance is greater than or equals to I'm just going to put here 60. Then the action for this, I'm going to select my enemy. And then I'm going to set position. So set value. And then it's going to be position. And then with a the double quotes, I'm going to put run. Now, because I've got the animation as well, I'm going to add another action select my enemy and i'm going to set the animation to also run click done now i've done this i'm going to highlight this right click and select copy and then i'm going to paste it two more times so paste and paste okay that one here it's going to be the uh if the line of sight is less than 60 is less than, less than 60 then i want basically to start attacking my player so i'm going to double click here and change the position to attack and also i'm going to change my animation to attack done and here i'm gonna make sure that if the player if the enemy is doesn't have line of sight with the player 
character okay so i can delete that one here press highlight and delete it i want the position to be stay and here it's gonna say stay click done remember if i double click here the enemy i've got a stay position a wrong position and attack position yeah so basically i'm um, saying based on the line of sight i'm basically applying these actions so if it's greater than 60 the distance then it's going to be run the position is going to be run and the animation run will play if is less than 60 the position will be attack and the attack will play and then if it's basically if it's non sight if the enemy doesn't see the player then it's going to stay okay let's save the project I'm just going to call it my AI. That's OK. And I'm going now to press play. So here's my player. Here's the enemy. Oops, I forgot. Ooh, I didn't put. All right. Let's go here. Uh, let's apply another behavior here. Bounce to layout. So the player will not fall. So bounce to layout. So the player will not fall again. Also, we need to select the enemy here. Uh, we need to make sure that the default controls are deselected. Press play. Okay, so as you can see here, ooh, we have an issue there. It's not turning. Okay, let's have a look why it's not turning. Okay, uh, ah, the uh, obstacles line of sight. Let's change that to costume. So it's 300. Let's press play. Okay. Okay, the distance working, but the player is not turning. Let's have a look why it's not turning. Okay, I've realized what I've done here. So let's double click here. This is not equals to, this is greater than. Okay, let's click done. So the enemy X position is greater than the player's position. Okay, let's try this. Let's save this. Let's try again. Okay, that's better. So we can trick that player. So as you can see here, is the, if the position, if I'm above him, the position is within the area where he start attacking. Okay, so he start attacking me. Okay, cool. Now, when he's attacking me, you can put another animation there where you can actually get in punches. So in the same way, so if is the if the player is in the same position as the looks like they're cuddling each other. <laughs> so now as you can see here, you cannot see me. Now he sees me, now he can't, now he sees me, now he can't, and now I can trick him. And because the distance here is 200 pixels, if it's longer than 200 pixels, then he won't be able to see me. I'm out of sight. And you could be able to actually change this based on selecting the enemy and basically change the range. So if I change the range, say for instance, to 100, and press play. He won't be able to see me until I reach to 100 pixels. So once I reach to 100 pixels, then he sees me. That's it. Come. That's it. So 100 pixels, and then once he reaches to 60 pixels, less than 60 pixels, then he start attacking me. Okay. This is how you create an AI by using Construct 3. I hope you've learned something new today. I hope you will apply these new skills of yours to create some cool stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.